Hi, before we get too far into this episode, episode 22 that is, I want to make a quick public announcement. I actually uploaded video 22 onto our YouTube channel about 24 hours ago, and this morning I abruptly pulled it down. I guess overnight uh, it had become monetized. I guess the mistake was that I had purchased a piece of music from a secondary music supply house, and somehow that automatically gives them a right to monetize our channel because I'm using their content, I guess. So one of the viewers overnight actually made a comment in the comment box and like I said I pulled that down off of YouTube this morning. I've edited the video a little bit different, taken that track out obviously and added a different track of music. I think you'll still enjoy the video and I'm uploading it now. So again the, the intent of the Western Flyer Foundation has always been that this is just a gift from us to our subscribers. We, we never have the intent to monetize this or try to make money off of it. I know that's pretty useful to a lot of these projects you see on YouTube but for us, it's just a way to get the, the story out there to a broader audience. So I hope you enjoy this video and carry on. Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris Chase with the Western Flyer Foundation, and this is another chapter in the rebuilding of the Western Flyer. I've been out of town for a couple of weeks. I was down in the Monterey, California area filming a side project for the Flyer Foundation that'll be one of these upcoming episodes very soon. So let's just catch up in this episode. Let's see what happened over the last few weeks. Ryan and Jordan had been finishing up the hull planking. There were actually five planks that were left off the boat until that bulwark section through the working deck had been permanently installed. And they were almost finished up with that. And Tim and Pete have actually been working on the yellow cedar for the bulwarks. It goes around the stern. That aluminum bulwark in that last episode actually stopped. It was 24 inches tall. Stopped at about 30 feet back from the brake beam and it transitioned down through a curved scallop down to a lower 12 inch tall sawn out of yellow cedar bulwark section around the stern and that's what those two guys have been working on. So in this episode let's just see what's happened over the last few weeks. The majority of the hull planking was completed about three months ago, back in March. But at that time, there were five planks, both port and starboard, that were left off the boat. Those planks ran for about 60 feet from the stem back all the way across the working deck bulwarks. The first 35 feet were against the hull, and that last 30 feet created the plank bulwarks through the main working deck. Those planks were left off the boat at the time for two main reasons. One was to allow quick and easy installation of the sponsoning guard. With that planking window into the boat open, clamps could be reached around the backside of the planking and the sponsoning guard could be quickly and easily installed. And the second main reason was the working deck bulwarks were not yet built. Now with those bulwarks built and installed permanently, those planks can be patterned, cut out, and installed onto the boat. The first four planks in that stack are pretty easy and narrow. They're two inches thick, but they're only about three and four inches wide, so they can be worried into place. They're screwed to the stem, and then with a series of clamps along the way, they're clamped and screwed, clamped and screwed as you work your way back around the boat. The uppermost plank, because of the extreme flare of the bow and the extra width of it, will actually need to be steamed into place.
The first 30 feet of bulwarks running aft from the brake beam out across the working deck is what we call a planked bulwark. This is traditionally built using hull planking fastened to either frame tops or wooden stanchions. We opted to use that aluminum framework seen in the last episode due to its low maintenance. At about 30 feet back from the brake beam, it transitions from that 24 inch tall plank bulwark down to a 12 inch tall, what we call stacked bulwark. This is due to the original design. In 1937, the Western Flyer carried what we called a turntable. The turntable facilitated easy and efficient stacking of the original seine net. Staying true to that design, we opted to do the exact same step. That step is built up using a layer of 2 inch Oroco, 2 inch yellow cedar, and then two layers of 4 inch tall yellow cedar, all sawn and carved to the shape of the boat. Each layer is fastened down to the boat, bedded and painted out. Once everything has been permanently installed to the boat, the plank bulwarks and the stacked bulwark in the stern, the entire area will get covered over with a nice inch and three quarter by eight inch purple heart cap. When you think of planking, you automatically envision an overall wearing boat builder standing in front of a 16 inch Walker Turner bandsaw. That does happen, but the majority of the planks I've cut out as a shipwright and the majority of the planks that were installed on the Western Flyer were cut out using a modified circular saw. Believe it or not, most of the planking on the Flyer, and for that matter most small boats, the bevels hardly exceed 4 to 6 degrees. With a few modifications to your own saw, you can easily cut out even if they have long sweeping curves almost any plank. The advantage to using a handheld saw is that planking can become a one person job. It's also way faster to bring the tool to the work than to work to the tool. And lastly, using that 7 to 8 inch blade on a saw, you'll end up with a much cleaner cut, making that final shaping faster. Two or three passes with your power planer, followed with a few swipes of your trusty number four Stanley, and you're done. My recommendation would be, if you're working towards becoming a professional boat builder, learn to minimize your steps. Hand tools definitely have their place, but speed comes from using the right tool at the right time.
The yellow cedar being used on the bulwarks was provided by the same sawmill that provided the yellow cedar for the ceiling, the Mahan log and lumber. The wood actually came out of the exact same stand of trees in the North Cascades. To maximize the yield of each log, I had the log split sawn. This is a method of cutting a log straight across the diameter, leaving the sap, bark, and any hidden curves. This method of sawing a log can really maximize the potential usable lumber. You never know when that extra half an inch will make or break the piece you're trying to lay out. We had the logs milled at four and a half inches by 12 to up to 30 inches wide, giving lots of usable options. Each individual lift is patterned in plan view for both shape and any needed bevels, but that final fitting is done on the boat using a scribe and a power planer. There's almost 35 feet of bulwarks built in this exact same method, coming off both sides port and starboard from the stem back to the brake beam. So I'm sure in a future episode, we'll dive a lot deeper into how to lay out, cut, and install this type of bulwark. Hey, that's it, the end of another episode here at the Flyer Foundation. Thanks for taking the time to tune in and watch the video. I really enjoy making them. And remember, I actually said in that opening sequence, I've got a, a really unique side project coming out. It'll actually be probably the next episode here. It steps a little bit away from the wood boat side of the project, and it dives head first into what the Flyer Foundation is really all about. I think you're really gonna enjoy that. And I also have been working with an outside editor, I've been working with my footage, it's created something pretty cool that'll be coming out later this summer or early fall. So make sure you tune back in for both of those side projects. And until next time, thanks again for tuning in.